Hello, this is Prince of Somnia, and welcome back to more Let's Play Xenoblade Chronicles 2. In the last episode, we, well, began the game. And in this episode, we're going to be continuing on with the game by heading on to Rex's first big job. For a hundred thousand. We the maelstrom for this. Banner sure has deep pockets. I joke Go about it a lot, of, a lot of the time, but I, I genuinely love the fact that there Wait, are some, so many accents 12. in this game. What's my age got to do with anything? I can tell an awesome feat of engineering when I see one. You don't close your mouth soon, you're gonna swallow a There's just a something fly. about them that I just really What's like. What's that problem? I don't know, maybe age. it's because I play so many games where also, the you cast might is pretty you stand. exclusively American. Otherwise, when we cast I just off, appreciate that when they have voice up. actors <gasps> from Europe or the UK or whatever. Gotcha! What, you little... Now look whose mouth's hanging Makes open. Makes the world feel more... I don't know, diverse? Alive? Something to Rex. that effect. We're heading out. There's no one seeing you off, right? You got night watch. Till then, rest up inside. Aye, aye. Later. <laughs> oh, yeah, this more tutorials that I don't care about. I don't know, I'll explain things as and when they really become relevant. And right now I don't think selling things is all that relevant, so... Let's just leave. I gotta admit, airships like those are always impressive in video games. I'm a big fan of airships, I gotta be honest. Kinda makes me miss the days of like old style RPGs where you could just grab an airship and fly around on the world map. That seems to be kind of getting phased out uh, in more modern games though, which is tragic, but whatever. I mean, it's not like it's a deal breaker or anything like that. Fair enough, fair enough. Let's chat with these drivers, I guess. <laughs> nice. I like Nia a lot. I don't know if she's my favorite character, but she's definitely up there. Uh, oh. Oh, this way, of course. We gotta go talk to Sephiroth before we can move on. I mean, um, <clears throat> Jin. just asked you where you're from, not your life story, dude. I guess he's okay with it, though. He seems like a decent fellow. And arrived. And we've got these guys. Man, Sever's design, just like... It looks so weird. It kinda reminds me, and I've never actually seen the movie myself, but it reminds me of the alien. Y you know the one. I don't know, the only time I can think of the alien in my head, but the only image that comes to mind is from Conqueror's Bad Fur Day. <laughs> uh. Now that, friends, is one heck of a game. Anyway, yeah, once we're done talking to uh, all of those guys, we can chat up Manel over here and actually start our shift on the watch. This is actually a pretty nice view of all the nothing around us. Uh, um, you, you okay there? You okay? Uh, game? You. <laughs> uh. Hmm. 
That's the black ship from the harbour. Is it following us? Oof. It's way too cold up here. You? I'll have you know I've got a name. It's Nia. They've started boozing below decks. You should join them. Why aren't you there? It's not that I hate it. I just really don't need a headache right now. Huh. Good thing you're not a salvager then. Why's that? Swim like a fish and drink like one too. That's the salvager's code. Pfft, sounds terrible. I don't think I'll be changing careers. Hmm, probably for the best. Anyway, I bet you drivers earn a hell of a lot more than salvagers do. So, kid? My name's Rex. <laughs> okay, Rex. Why did you start salvaging in the first place? That there. The world tree? I don't get it. You know, you find all sorts of things digging through salvage. Some of it trash. Some of it treasure. But all of it from people long gone. Have you noticed, though, there's fewer titans each day? I saw one go under just the other day. It was a pretty big one. There must have been loads of animals still living on it. Living space is running out, day by day. And sooner or later, we'll be the ones sinking down into the cloud sea. But up there, Elysium is waiting for us. <laughs> Seriously, kid, Elysium, don't tell me you believe that gaff. So that's uh, why you're a salvager. It's just a lie for children. And that there is just an overgrown shrub. If there's a way to get up there, maybe it's hidden below the clouds. Is it really that crazy? Seriously, though? There'd be no need to fight over dwindling land and resources. No need to worry about our homes sinking away. Everyone could have peace and security. I mean, a dream like that, isn't that worth believing in? Nobody can tell you what to believe, but... <clears throat> Everyone, huh? What? I always thought people were pretty selfish by nature, but you... Huh. Do you have parents? No. When I asked Gramps, he told me they died when I was just a kid. Gramps? Oh, the same one who taught you to use arts. Yeah. He basically raised me himself. He's not like us, though. Not like... I'm not sure I catch a drift. But this Gramps of yours sounds all right. Huh. And you're all right too, kid. Not that different from me. We're in position. All personnel, report to stations. Salvage team, suit up and proceed to hatch. Oh, Jesus. This ship's rocking back and forth. Okay. <laughs> I don't honestly remember it doing this the first, or either of the two times I played this game, but both of them are kind of far away. This is reminding me of Sea of Thieves, the level of shaking it's doing. Your target is located inside a shipwreck 450 pairs straight down. Searching the wreck while submerged is too high risk for our test, so... We'll be using flotation devices and cranes to lift the hull first. Next, you'll split into teams and explore the interior. Once the target is found, retrieval can commence. If that's clear, let's begin with attaching the floats. Get into position. We're paying you low lives a lot, so don't screw it up. You smug so-and-so.
that it? It looks pretty ancient. Is that the... propulsion mechanism? I've never seen one that shape before. Which country made this? That's massive. The appearance matches our reports, but it's what's inside that matters. Object is secure. Proceed to second phase. Excellent work. You're not half bad, you know that. I do this for a living, remember? All teams? Proceed inside when ready. Right then. Let's get moving. You with us. Me? You gonna drag the kid along? Seriously? Guess he thinks you need all the help you can get. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There, you've got your orders, haven't you? All right, welcome to the ancient ship um, I'm gonna leave the party as it is but yeah we get access to those drivers that just joined our party although we can't really customize them or anything like that we also can't play uh, as any other character other than Rex at the moment which is fine uh, but if you go into the character menu uh, that was the X button which opens the skip travel menu <clears throat> you go into the character menu uh, you can see that Nia and Malos are both drivers, whereas Jin is not. Um, basically, the way drivers in this game work is that they have blades that they can equip that uh, essentially function as weapons. So, that's really nice. And the nice thing about blades is that they also influence your stats and your job class, which is like fighter for Rex, healer for Nia, that sort of a thing. Um, which also has different effects on your stats. For right now, I recommend going with Rex, Nia, and Malos because, uh, well, Rex functions as a DPS and Jin does as well, so there's really not that much of a use in putting them both in. And, well, you need healing, you know, like Genji. And Malos functions as a tank, which is really, really nice. So anyway, let's head over this way. there. Ah, uh, he's not too bad. He's only level two. And I guess we start off with all weapons from. 
Oh yeah, we also learned Sword Bash in the last episode. Basically what that does is that if you attack the enemy with it from behind, it does extra damage and will even fill up the gauge on the top corner there a little bit. So that's really nice. I guess the game hasn't really mentioned it yet, but you see that red ring around Dallas right now? That's basically uh, the enemy's aggro, and it's indicating that, you know, the enemy is focusing his attention on Dallas instead of anyone else, which is a good thing because Malus is our tank. Basically, tanks specialize in drawing and keeping aggro away from your party members. Amazing! So that's how drivers and blades fight? So ruthless. It's like they're monsters themselves. Nice. I'm sure glad these drivers are on our side. You too, Dramark. No need to get hysterical. It was a walk in the park. Yeah, but still. That's enough yapping, you pair of brats. Let's move! Kuh. Talk about self-important. Gramps always taught me to respect my elders. Elders. <laughs> they make short work of monster. These no ordinary fighters. Big job in Moradain going well too. They're much Money to be made from these people. <laughs> anyway, yeah, let's actually explore. The ancient ship here is the first real dungeon in. Oh my god. The first real dungeon in this game. Uh, basically, the way I quantify dungeons are areas like this where it's sort of linear and there are generally speaking a lot of enemies but all of them are scaled to the level of the party essentially well not scaled but they're generally around the level the party should be at that tutorial right there was telling you about how to lure enemies if you target them by pressing the r button and then you press the c down button on the left joycon just so you can attract the attention of an enemy and draw them to you it's a really good okay. early game Time tactic for down. peeling away enemies from an otherwise large group that would annihilate your team yeah. later on in the game i usually just charge in head force like a dumbass but this early in the game it's best to just try and engage enemies one at a time instead of going after them all at once as far as enemies go and as far as strategies go uh this game is a lot less about I guess, developing strategies for certain enemies, and more so having a general strategy and adapting to the flow of battle, if you can see my drift. So I'm probably not going to be going into a whole lot of detail about the enemies you see here. I certainly didn't in my guide because, honestly, there's not a whole lot that's going to change for certain enemies. Um, although, generally speaking, certain families of enemies actually do behave somewhat similarly. Like, Crabbles over here uh, tend to be a little more on the defensive side. They have that bubble spewing attack, which can deal quite a bit of damage. That sort of a deal. Treasure acquired. If there's, like, something noteworthy about an enemy, I'll be sure to mention it. But other than that, I'll probably either be avoiding combat or just cutting through fight fights, basically. Editing them out and so on and so forth. Uh, oh, crap. Uh, there was treasure up there. I guess I'll just have to come back for it later. Uh, anyway, yeah, there's a lot of enemies in here. I'm just gonna cut these fights out, I think. Uh, yeah. And if anything hits. noteworthy happens, I'll edit it back in, but I'm just gonna cut out and okay. clean this room. Time to take you down. I could have taken them all on. Okay. Now, I took care of a few enemies over there, but you'll notice the floor over here is looking a little on the rickety side. Basically, uh, once you walk across it, you'll fall through, and I want to see if I can avoid that. Okay, yeah, there we go. Wasn't too hard. Uh, we can Let's take out this King Crust Stick. He's not that much stronger than the one we fought at the beginning of the game. Yeah, yeah it should go down pretty easy. I keep instinctively pressing buttons in certain combinations because I'm used to late game Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which is, uh, in a word, busted. But besides that, ooh, we got a level too. 
Generally speaking, you don't actually have to fight a whole lot of enemies as you go through to get levels. They're usually honestly better ways of getting levels during the game, but Just so. for right now it's not a bad idea to fight Let's enemies the for, the, for the levels. I'll do as I please. You can at least get to like level 5 or so. Maybe higher. The enemies around here are really, really weak, though, so it's basically free experience. My lady, I would advise you to put Deservedly so. I mean, the game will get time. harder in the early game, just because, you know, that's how defense. games usually go. Yeah. I wonder if there are any RPGs that actually get harder as you go along instead of being hard really near the beginning because you don't have the access to the tools that you need to, you know, break the game. And I guess Radiant Historia was. I've been playing that a lot recently. I just finished it, basically. I saw an HP potion just fly up out of nowhere, and I don't know where that went. Huh. Anywho, yeah, I'm just gonna head up here. Because there's some treasure over here. I don't actually know if any of the treasure is, like, randomly determined, or if it's actually, like, a fixed sort of thing. I don't remember if I got the same treasure out of that that I did last time. But, I'm gonna equip it anyway. I keep on doing that, sorry. I keep pressing the X button instead of the plus button when I want to open up a menu. Let's see... Attack stone. Yeah, that's useful. Increases his auto attack damage. Okay. Most of the go. accessories in this game are not spectacularly great, uh, but they're useful at the very least. I like to have uh, HP boosting accessory in the early game, so like the Abyss Pass. Actually, if you want. Oh no no no! You can't screw around with Nia's equipment. I forgot about that. I was about to say you can give your other party members some equipment from Goldmouth, but then I remembered you actually can't change their equipment Treasure right now. Treasure quiet. Some reason or another. I want to say the chests are fixed, but I don't know for sure. Hmm. That would be something I end up writing into my guide later on, is how to get the chests. Treasure completion isn't really important in this game. I mean, there are some really good treasures late game, but that's late game. Uh, I think I have to fall down to get that treasure chest, actually. I don't know, I'm not gonna go super out of my way for treasure later on in the game. I just kinda wanted to show some stuff treasure off in the early quiet. game. Yeah, there's not a whole lot in that one. Oh, muscle belt actually isn't that bad. It's actually pretty damn good. Uh, I keep doing this. Fortunately, though, I don't have to confuse myself with controls because I'm playing with two Joy-Cons instead of my uh, USB controller. Yeah, that's a nice strength boost. The thing about strength boosts over auto attack damage okay, is that a strength boost on. will also increase your arts damage, whereas auto attack damage won't. Yeah. Well, it'll increase your physical Everyone's arts damage, sight. but... Both of Rex's arms are right now physical, so that's all that matters. Here we go. That wasn't too hard. I think I just want to skip the rest of these fights, though. I'm not too interested in fighting them, and uh, this episode's gone on. Whoa! Long enough. Okay, bring it on. I almost forgot about this guy. Yeah, that was a le legitimate sort of shock right there. I can still be surprised by a video game I've played twice. Uh, two and a half times. I did play a little bit of New Game Plus, only up until Chapter 8 or so. Let's see. Uh, I think it's pretty much smooth sailing from here on out. Uh, we could go that way, but there's treasure back here that I want to collect first. Um, yeah, I'll clear these guys out. Let's show them a thing or three. They'll Make aggro sure me otherwise. Okay, took care of those guys. Uh, hmm, we're like right on the edge of a level, which is good. Anyway, let's head down this way for right now. This is where we have to go, but there's a couple of other things we can pick up along the way. 
Like this treasure over here. You're all mine. Something, something, there's treasure everywhere. A little money couldn't help, hurt, couldn't hurt, though. Couldn't help. I yeah, no, something. money is totally worthless. Don't even bother. Anyway, uh, you see, we're trying to get into this door, which you can access by this panel, but we need power to get through it, which we can use with an ether canister. So first we have to find one, then we have to bring it back here. That's basically how this uh, area works. Is there a treasure? No, there's no treasure over there. Uh, the can we're looking for is back there. Okay, bring it on. First, I guess we're gonna have to kill this guy. Four lethal lights at. I think the Lysaps are actually like the strongest of the enemies around here. They at least tend to do the most damage. And they also None. tend to aggro on me, even if I'm like a higher level. Ooh! Nice! We got another art for Rex there. Double spinning edge. Heh. <laughs> mm. Basically, uh, what double spinning edge does is that it's a two hit attack that does bonus damage when you attack from the side. Okay. It's a Time really to nice thing to have, down. which is why it's a pretty good get idea it, to get us to level 5 in this area. Be careful when you're using R2 bonus effects, by the way. Uh, if you do too much damage all at once, like right then, you'll probably pull the aggro off of Malos and end up getting attacked yourself, which is not good. I also recommend not standing on the same side of the enemy as your tank, because there are a lot of er abilities in this game that are actually area of effect, even though they look like they might not be, and there's a chance that you might get injured by those attacks when they're going after your tank instead. Anyway, we can pick up our ether cylinder over there, but before we head back to that uh, fuel chamber, let's head up this side so we can pick up that chest we noticed earlier. Treasure acquired. Or treasure trove, I guess. Let's see, friendship ring, I'm not too interested in that. I don't care about friendship. Oh. Just kidding, just kidding. Oh yeah, I guess you can see there, there is fall damage in this game. Uh, you won't get hurt if you land in water, but if you land on solid ground, you can lose a lot of your HP and even die. And I think the damage fall damage does to you is actually scaled to your current HP. Like, I, I'm not sure how much it is scaled, because I know there are heights that I can survive at higher levels than I can at lower levels, but there are definitely heights that I can't survive no matter what. I know that for a fact. Ooh, it's actually really pretty. No idea how ether is supposed to work, but I guess that doesn't matter so much. Alright, now we can open the door. Basically, we can just walk straight through there. And... Uh, oh. Hmm. He doesn't look too friendly. But surely we can take him on. In the next episode of Let's Play Xenoblade Chronicles 2. <laughs> uh, that was awkward. Whatever. See you guys then.